friends, we are now going to actually have ooh, a proof that is on here. But it's not as bad as it seems. Just remember, we're going to take this approach the same way as we started with our algebraic and initial geometric proofs from lesson 2-4. But remember, when we have a proof, we always do it with two columns. We're going to have our statements, okay, which is on the left, which is our work. And we're always going to justify on the reasons. Now, a few things you need to remember. Our given is always the starting place. So our given and our diagram help us out. And the prove is where we always want to end up. I have three questions that are posted on my wall. And one is, what do I have? Well, what do I have It tells me my given and my diagram. The second question is, where do I want to go? Well, that's where I want to end up. I want to show two congruent angles. All right? So we're going to do that. And then the next thing that... I want to do is ask how I'm going to get there. How would I like to prove this? Well, and this is where it's kind of trial and error, but you learn to ask yourself questions as you go. But when you're in doubt, the best way that you can always, always start is start by using a given. You could list them all at once, or you could list them separately. And I'm going to list these separately so you can see where I'm getting your reasons, okay, as we go. My first one is that segment BA is parallel to segment CF, and that's given. Now, like any good geometry student would do, and I'm sure you're all good geometry students, you mark the fact that these two things are parallel. All right? Since they're parallel, I'm going to start looking for certain things. Like, I'm going to look for either alternate interior angles, corresponding angles, alternate exterior, or same side interior. But notice how this is drawn. Oh, that's a Z shape. Probably going to use alternate interior angles. Not sure, but I'm going to try that. So the second thing I'm going to write down is because I know these two are parallel and angle 1 and angle C are alternate interior angles, I realize they're congruent. So I have to go back to my theorem from two days ago and write the following. If parallel lines, then alternate interior angles are congruent. So I know where they're coming from. Now I'm kind of stuck again, but I'm going to mark what I just wrote there. I have these two angles are congruent to each other. Then I'm going to go back to my given again. This time I go segment BC is parallel to segment ED. Again, where did I get that? Given. So it's okay to pull it in there. And then I'm going to mark it on my diagram because I do not want to miss that piece of information. So I'm going to use two arrows this time to show that these two are parallel. Now, if there is a marked angle, use it. Probably going to be used. Not every time, but this time. Now, look at angle C and angle 2. These two, and if you need to extend that just a little bit to understand where I'm seeing these things, I'm going to be looking for either corresponding angles or alternate interior angles or some sort of angles like that again. Look at angle C and angle 2. What type of angles are those? They're corresponding. They're on the same side, one's interior, one's exterior. So they're corresponding. And if I have parallel lines, what do I know about corresponding angles? That's right. They're parallel. Notice my markings here. Ooh, they're congruent. Now I just have to get my reasons and work to show it. So the next thing I'm going to do is go angle C is congruent to angle 2. And my reason would be if parallel lines, then corresponding angles are congruent. You notice I write the shortcut method because I don't want to write all this stuff out over and over again. So, when I do that, I then look at steps 2 and 4. Notice this step told me this one, this step told me this one. Now i got to look at these two. I haven't used them yet. Look at this. Angle 1 is congruent to angle C. Angle C is congruent to angle 2. Is that the same thing as going A equals B and B equals C? Yeah, it's using like our LS, our transitive property. So that's what we do next. Therefore, our final step is angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 by the transitive property. You guys just did a proof with me. And this is just a good one to go back with. Now, the next ones, we're not going to be doing proofs, but we have to justify our work. So we need to decide which lines are parallel or not. So I'm looking here, and I got four um, different lines, but I'm going to look at the ones in pairs. Like, I'm going to work at um, N and O together. I'm going to look at L and M together. And I'm going to look to see if I can somehow justify some lines are parallel. So I look here, and I go, oh, look, those are... Um, same side interior angles, 
Look, what if I add them together? Oh, they add together to be 185. So if they add together 185, automatically N and O are not parallel. But look this way. If I ignore this line, these two are same sign interior angles. And what's 115 plus 65? 180. Which that means those are same sign interior angles that are supplementary. If same sign interior angles are supplementary, what do we know about those lines? They're parallel. So this is how you'd write your answer down, and this is how you would justify it. Guys, you have to be able to justify this. This is coming up on your quiz, and this is going to be coming up on the test for this chapter. So in this case, I know line L is parallel to line M, and here's my justification, and it works this way. Same sign, interior angles are supplementary imply parallel lines. Now, how do I know not to go parallel lines? First, I'm trying to show that they're parallel. They're not marked to start with. So that would be our reason. So that would be like part A. This would be my reason, part B. Now, look at this next one. I'm going to do the same type of process. Oh, look, those don't add together to be um, 180. So those two lines obviously are not going to be parallel. But look at B, C, A, D, and using this line right here. Oh. What's 125 plus 55? Oh, yeah, they are parallel because look at 125 plus 55 is 180, and that makes that C shape, which are same side interior angles. So this time I can go ahead and say, oh, I know that they're parallel. So we get segment BC is going to be, or it says lines or segments, I'm going to do segments this time, are parallel to segment AD for the exact same reason as over here. And what's over here? My same side interior angles. So if I have same side interior angles are supplementary, then I get parallel lines. Now let's look at the next ones. And these can get really hard to see visually. And so I'm going to need you guys to trust me a little bit when I mark up some of the diagrams that we're working with. For instance, I don't see anything that works, but I know that this angle is 30 degrees and this angle is 30 degrees. And I'm going to turn my paper around. I'm now going to extend this line and this line. All right? And then I'm going to change this into, and it is a transversal. So basically, I need to ignore TH. I need to ignore um, AR because look what this does. This causes corresponding angles that are congruent to each other. And of course, when angles are congruent, what do we know about these line segments? They're going to be parallel. So we go back to that one. And we say, okay, segment TR is parallel to segment UH. All right. Because why? If corresponding angles are congruent, then we have parallel lines. Again, we didn't start with the parallel lines. We started with the angles first. So see what we're asking. All right, and the next one, last but not least, what do we get with this one? We actually have to work with our angles a little bit more. And by the way, the 79 goes with this angle. And when we experiment with this one, we find out that these two lines are the ones that are parallel because this angle and this angle add up to 180 degrees. So we have same sign to your angles again. So we can go line A is parallel to line A. B, and it's because of our same side interior angles again. So same side interior angles are supplementary implies parallel lines. Now, we're not always going to have to justify every step, but you should know how they work. Last three examples, and yes, I know the numbers are off, but that's so I can have space to show you the work, to work with these. But we want to go and solve for this. It says, find the value for x for which a is parallel to t. If they ask you for that, you want to kind of assume in advance that they're going to be parallel. So in our brains, we think parallel already. And notice these are going to be same side exterior angles. Well, I'm going to use the fact that these are corresponding angles. And if I have parallel lines, my corresponding angles are congruent. The instant I do that, that allows me to make this linear pair. 
Now this linear pair adds up to how many degrees? Ignore the rest of the stuff. Some of the parts equal the whole it should be 180. So I go over here and I go, okay, I get x plus 44 plus 93 is equal to 180. So we get x plus 137 is equal to 180. Subtract 37 and I'm going to get 43 degrees. So that works for number 8. Now, let's use the same type of ideas to help us out with number 10. Now, number 10, um, notice they're on opposite sides, but we have an angle right here, and we have an angle over here, and they're not any of them that we talked about, corresponding, same side interior, anything like that. But I can use vertical angles to help me with this one. And the vertical angle I'm going to use is the fact that these two are equal. And that's 3x degrees. Well, that means then these two angles are same side interior angles now, which means they're going to be supplementary. So I'm actually going to do the work over here to the right. So forgive me that if it's kind of cramped. But I'm going to go, all right, if they're supplementary, add them together to be 180. So I get 5x minus 10 equals 180. 5x equals 170. Divide by 5, x is going to equal 38. It's kind of cool, isn't it? Now, we have another one that kind of causes some issues. It's like, how in the world do I mess with such a complicated diagram? You play with it. You decide what works best for you. Now, for instance, I'm going to use the fact I have corresponding angles, and I think this is the best method. I know if I ignore right now, um, this line, okay? We're going to worry about this one as our transversal. I know that corresponding angles are congruent to each other, which means this angle down here is going to be 2x minus 75. Then I can use the fact that the sum of the parts equal the whole, and the three angles down here will add up to 180 degrees. That's just one way of doing it, and I kind of like it as the best approach on this one. So I literally have to write them all out. We're going to go x plus 35 plus 2x minus 75 plus 2x minus 20 equals 180 because some of the parts equal the whole. So I add them all together. x plus 2x plus 2x, that's 5x. We also know that 35 minus 75 is going to be negative 40 plus a negative 20 is a negative 60. I combine my like terms. We add 60 to both sides. 5x is equal to 240. Divide by 5. Divide by 5. X is going to equal what? 48. And so now we have the answer for that one too. All right. Guys, I hope this helps a little bit. That was a lot of math that we're doing. But I know you can get there.